Well, Mike, thanks a lot. You're well prepared, man. I can tell you that. You've done your research and done a great job. So you're awesome, baby, with a capital A. The ML Sports Platter is brought to you by our great friends at Empower Federal Credit Union. Find your peace of mind today with Empower online, empowerfcu.com. Big tip of the cap, thank you as well to Rosie's Corner, Ken's Auto Detailing, Sit Meets Sit Syracuse, and Welch and Company Jewelers. Log on to welchjewelers.com today. Bracelets, earrings, watches, engagement rings, wedding rings, you name it. Welchjewelers.com. Shop the showcase and talk to a jewelry expert. Welchjewelers.com. Welch and Company Jewelers is the official jewelry store of the ML Sports Platter, which is all over the major platforms like Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you get your pods. Be sure to download, subscribe, leave feedback, and a five-star review. Well, it is a busy time in the NFL in terms of free agency, and no team is making more moves than the Buffalo Bills. Let's bring in the beaten sideline reporter, a WGR 550 for the Bills, at Sal Sports on Twitter, Sal Capaccio. Sal, welcome aboard. Pretty good, man. Uh, hope everything's going well for you and everybody listening, obviously. Yeah, no doubt. So let's start with Stefan Diggs. What does he immediately bring to the Bills? Well, you know, he's an elite wide receiver in this league, really. Uh, he's a number one, a true number one. That's what the Bills needed. And I think more than anything, like he just lets the uh, – the chess pieces fall into place, if you will, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Diggs becomes the number one receiver, and you can put John Brown as the number two where he really belongs, and then Cole Beasley underneath them in the slot. And the Bills ran a lot of 11 personnel last year. Uh, that's, you know, one tight end, one wide receiver, one one tight end, one running back, three wide receivers. This allows them to really go three, uh, three receivers, 11 personnel, and have, uh, I think, a really dynamic unit that all fit really perfectly. He'll also give Josh Allen a guy to throw to that not only has speed uh, opposite of John Brown, which would be great, but a great catch radius, gets a lot of balls that other guys simply can't even when they're a little off target. The Bills also making major moves on the defensive side of the ball sale. Take us through those moves and which one you like the best. Well, Mario Addison uh, was signed from the Carolina Panthers. So a big connection, obviously, to McDermott and Bean when they were there, but also, more than anything, Eric Washington, the new Bills D-line coach, was his defensive coordinator the last couple of years. He's a guy who's going to be 33, but he's had no less than nine sacks each of the last four years. Super productive, getting to the passer, and he's a younger 33. He really didn't start playing a vital role uh, until he's about 26 years old. So uh, I like that signing for the Bills. A.J. Klein, a linebacker, um, comes over. Also, another Carolina connection. He was backing up Luke Keekley and playing linebacker that went to New Orleans for a couple of years, but he can play all three linebacker spots. That's really important to the Bills, having position versatility. He can be the strong side and place of Lorenzo. He can uh, back up Milano and Edmonds if needed as well. Uh, they went out and got Vernon Butler. Now, he's a guy that I'm a little curious about because he's largely been a first round bust for the uh, Carolina Panthers since coming in, but he had his breakout season last year uh, six sacks, and again, Eric Washington was there, and it's not like the Bills don't know this guy. They're not just kind of taking a flyer on a former first-round pick. They know him. You know, McDermott and Bean were there when they evaluated him coming out of college, and, you know, they'll understand, you know, who he is, what he's about, and they're going to have a plan for him. They're going to have a role for him, so we'll see. But the guy I like the most is Quentin Jefferson, very ascending player coming from the Seattle Seahawks. He can play inside and outside on the defensive line. I believe he's going to be an inside player for the Bills. He's mostly only an outside player in a 3-4. Bills run a 4-3. But even reading a lot of Seattle Seahawks um, fans' comments, they're very upset they lost this guy because he was playing a vital role for them, and he was really coming into his own. I think that he could be the the, the best signing of the group. Sal Capaccio, WGR 550 Buffalo Bills, sideline reporter and insider here on the ML Sports Platter. Sal, where is this team now with cap room? What do they have left? Well, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of people kind of floating some numbers out there going by what Track has, and I like think Michael does a great job, Michael Giannetti, with that website. I think he's got them right around uh, $35 million. Now, you have to remember, they're going to have to save some for their uh, their draft picks and things like that. Uh, starting at 4 o'clock on Wednesday, only the top 51 salaries on each team count, so you don't have to count, obviously, 90 guys on the roster. The Bills still have about, believe it or not, from my count, as you and I talk here right now, 26 roster spots open to get to 90 for camp. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, they still have work to do, just like a lot of teams in the league, like almost every team in the league. Uh, But it looks like they're still going to have some room if they want to fit a guy or two under there. But uh, it's starting to get neat up, including by Jordan Poyer's extension, which gave him a little bit of new money, and he should count about $8 million towards the cap. Okay, so we hear a lot of 
you know, times about the Bills, you know, re redoing the culture, McDermott being on and on, people buy in, it's not the same uh, Bills and all the rest. That's fine, and I believe it, I believe you, I believe everybody talking about it, but they bring in Josh Norman, they bring in Stephon Diggs, two guys who, you know, they're, they're kind of off the wall a little bit, right? I mean, these are big personalities, Sal. Are they going to be able to keep their cool in Buffalo? Well, I mean, I think an instance here, an instance there is a little different than having, you know, constant headaches. I don't think either guy's had that. You know, they're competitive people. Um, you know, Stefan Diggs, you've seen him on the sidelines yelling at a guy. You know, one of the things he yelled at one of the quarterbacks or when he yelled at Kirk Cousins was, play your game, play your game. He wasn't, you know, being a malcontent or anything like that. Uh, these are fiery people. They're competitive people. Let's remember... Um, Josh Norman played for Sean McDermott, had his best years when yeah. he was there. So this is a guy that he's familiar with. But here's what I'll say about that, Mike. You know, it is it is different to get guys, these. Some of these guys, their personalities are different and make you think, well, wait a minute. You preach culture and you preach this and that. Culture is not about choir boys. It's about people fitting into what you believe. And not only that, I think what happened here is, you know, the, there are certain players the Bills would not have brought in in McDermott's first year, maybe even his second year. Now that he's going into his fourth year, you know, they have players and leaders in place that have been there that they feel better that they can bring others in that fall in line. You know, now you've insulated your player driven leadership in your locker room with the kind of people you know that you can trust to say, Hey, we got a guy here that maybe he's not been the greatest teammate. Not saying either of these guys, for example, but maybe uh, a guy's run a follow the law, something, a character issue. But you know what? We can bring him in our locker room because we have a strong locker room that he'll fit into. And that's what it's all about for these guys now. So based on what they've done in free agency, I mean, the Bills arguably in the league have had the best free agency. Um, you could argue Arizona, you could argue some others, you could argue Tampa getting Brady, blah, blah. I think the Bills are, are, are having as good as a free agent period as anybody. Where now do they go in the draft? Now that they've gotten a Stephon Diggs, now that they've traded some picks, they've gone pretty uh, heavy with the D uh, side of things and, and the versatile guys sale. How does all the free agent signings, how does that now impact the draft and what they have left in the draft? Well, let's see where they go uh, still here in free agency. But I think as we sit here right now, um, we can still look to uh, maybe running back to complement Devin Singletary. And I'm not talking talk about an early pick. I think maybe somewhere in the middle rounds. Now, maybe they still get a veteran backup. I'd like to see somebody. I, I still think they're going to sign somebody who's been in the league, maybe a Carlos Hyde, maybe a Lamar Miller, mm -hmm. uh, someone like that who can commit. I like T.J. Yeldon as a compliment, but you know, I think that's an area they'd like to focus on. I think offensive line, they'd still like to add there a little bit to their depth, especially maybe a tackle, considering even though they did bring Quentin Spain back and then Cody Ford's you know, position as he goes forward is going to ultimately wind up being a guard. So what do they have a right tackle? Ty and Secchi, you know, you know, he, he, he stayed in the field for the most part last year, but he did still have some, some issues. And then, you know, he missed a couple of games and he's only under contract for one more year. And then, you know, still edge rusher. I think they'd like to get younger there, even though Mario Addison comes in and can help Jerry Hughes, um, Trent Murphy, Mario Addison, not the youngest group at edge rusher, but I do think they need um, depth in the secondary. Even with Jordan Poyer signing the extension, he's there for three more years, Micah Hyde for two more years, Tredavious White obviously is on his rookie contract, they'll extend him soon, but then, you know, you still have uh, some guys on the other side, Kevin Johnson, the free agent, Levi Wallace, Josh Norman was just signed, I'd like to see them try and add some depth to the secondary, both at corner and at safety, and at corner, both in the slot and on the outside. All right, so the collective bargaining agreement, um, immediate takeaways there. Do you like it, Sal? Well, I like it because it means means football. You know, it's not uh, – yeah. obviously, obviously I cover the league, uh, so it does impact me. But, you know, I didn't have a stake in this, you know, so mm -hmm. it's not my position to judge, not my position to say this is a great deal or a bad deal. That's up to the people who it directly affects their job and livelihood on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's the players and the you know, people who vote for it. But, look, I understand why some players – you know, we're not wanting it or against it because of the 17th game and some other things. But I also fully understand why a lot of players wanted it. And you know, I'll give you a real life example, which is if you are a player who's in his second year making a minimum salary, that would be guys for the Bills like Robert Foster or Levi Wallace, who just signed their you know equal rights free agent um, you know tenders. For those guys, you know, their second year minimum salary is six hundred sixty thousand dollars, but just because they signed the CBA and, and it passed, they get a $90,000 raise this year, each one of them. It goes to seven fifty. Now you will multiply that by everybody across the board, and let's just say you play three years in this league, which is about average. Each one of those guys is basically making about $100,000 more 
in their 20s for three years to play maybe three extra games because that's what it amounts to if that's how long they play in their career. Tom Brady to Tampa. Um, I'm just going to give you the stage, how it you know affects the Bills. Do you buy into a lot of the garbage where, I think it's garbage, where, well, the Patriots, this is it now. I mean, they still have Belichick, right? So where's the impact do you think hit most for Tom Brady to Tampa? Is it, is it Brady? Is it Belichick? Is it the Pats, the Bills, the Bucks? Well, look, I mean, I, I don't think it's it for the Patriots, but I do think they're severely a different team that right now than they were you know, just a few days ago. It's not just Tom Brady. They've lost Jimmy Collins. They've lost Van Noy. Uh, you know, they, they've lost guys. Um, or, or Demont Harmon. Deron Harmon, excuse me. Um, you know, so they're not going to be the same team. And I do think that they're, the Bills now have a legitimate chance to win the AFC East. I do also know that Bill Belichick has won without Tom Brady in the past, whether that was Matt Castle there or Tom Brady was suspended. But certainly they're not the same team. And I think the Bills getting Stephon Diggs was also part of them realizing, hey, now is the time to strike. You know, this is this, this thing is wide open. We can do this. We got Josh Allen on his rookie deal. Uh, we this this AFC East could be ours for the taking. I think the Jets might feel the same way. Maybe the Dolphins too is why they're making those moves. So I, I don't uh, dismiss completely that. You know, I'm not going to say that they're going to be the same team. They're going to be completely bad. I don't think so. But I don't think they're nearly the team they were. Now, as far as Tampa's concerned, look. I, Brady wasn't that great last year. He was good. He had some good games, uh, but he he ranked in the bottom third of the league in some major statistical categories, uh, showing you know his efficiency and things like that. So he goes to Bruce Arians in Tampa, which I think he's going to have great weapons around him. But he is also forty three years old, and you know we'll see if he can you know find what he didn't have last year in Tampa. So I think that's going to be super interesting. But as far as the Bills are concerned. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand why the Bills now should be a team that others around the country could think could challenge and even win the AFC East now. Final thing, one minute to go. Do you think we'll have NFL football at the start? Yeah, I do. Somehow I think it'll happen, okay. but I'm also an optimist. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. hoping. Uh, let's hope that happens. I hope that we have all this stuff, you know, cleared up sooner than we all hope, uh, that we all think it might happen, and, you know, it's it's a... A horrible situation that we're all in around the country right now. Hopefully, where everybody's taking care of each other. But yeah, Mike, I do think we're going to have football on time. But then again, you know, I, I wouldn't be completely shocked if not, considering everything that's been going on. All right. Well, he's a beat man, sideline reporter for the Buffalo Bills, WGR 550 at Sales Sports on Twitter, at WGR 550 on Twitter. And of course, catches articles, WGR550.com. Sal Capaccio. Thanks, Sal. Okay, buddy. Thank you. The ML Sports Platter is brought to you by Ryan W. Hanlon of Howard Hanna Real Estate. Go on to his website, ryanwhanlon.com. Buying and selling homes, it's tough. He can help you out. Huge, huge, huge insight into the Central New York housing market, ryanwhanlon.com. A big tip of the cap thank you as well to Hides of Liverpool, Brian Conboy of Mass Mutual New York State, Ken's Auto Detailing, and Sit Means Sit Syracuse. Log on to syracuse.sitmeansit.com for a free consultation to get your dog in for the best training in and around Central New York. And also, a big thank you as well to the official college of the ML Sports Platter, Bryant and Stratton College, and our good friends at the Vince Aguera Consulting Group. If you're looking to transform your life as a leader in business, in education, personally, professionally, go ahead and visit vcgtransforms.com and find out the services that Scott and his team can offer you. Thanks again to Sal Capaccio of WGR 550, the great Buffalo Bills sideline reporter and insider here on the ML Sports Platter, which you can download and subscribe to and leave a five-star review for and some feedback all over the major platforms where you get your podcasts on your smartphone device. I'm Mike Lindsley. Hit me on Twitter at Mike L Sports. And as I always tell you, when they return, enjoy the games.